these clothing layers or these clothing layers. Today we talk about what our family wears for a fall hike in the high country. Hello everyone, I'm Jason. When I used to teach hiking, climbing, and mountaineering skills for the Colorado Mountain Club, we talked about how important it is to get the right layers for the season. So a couple of months ago, I did a video on summer gear for hiking a 14er. That's a peak above 14,000 feet. Well, as we move into fall, getting layers right is more challenging because you get highly variable temperatures and conditions. So today I'm talking about hiking in conditions that range from high temperatures in the mid 40s Fahrenheit, or about seven Celsius, to lows in the low 20s Fahrenheit, or minus five Celsius. And think wind chills ranging from non-existent to lows in the teens Fahrenheit, or around minus 10 Celsius. That's quite a range, right? 35 degrees of temperature range in Fahrenheit, or about 17 degrees of range in Celsius. So what do you wear for a temperature range that's that broad? Let's compare summer to fall clothing layer by layer to see the differences. For the specific make and model of each piece of gear, see the description below or head to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. We have additional information related to this and all our videos, plus lots of gear lists and itinerary examples. Underwear, not a lot to change here. Still antimicrobial non-cotton underwear for both me and the boys. Socks. We move from one layer of socks to two layers. I'm still wearing my toe socks as a first layer to stop blisters from happening. For shoes, we're still in our trail runners unless we know there's going to be snow above that low ankle height. Then it's time to start thinking about boots. For us, the weight penalty is still too great for wearing boots, given the added layer of an extra sock to help with warmth. And besides, your feet and hands stay warm best when you keep your core warm. So speaking of pants and tops, the soft shell pant is still a good choice, but now we're putting a wool base layer underneath. I need to be thinking about keeping warm on breaks in colder temps. And then there's always the safety margin needed around an unplanned overnight stay. And the same goes for our tops. We're now adding in a base layer under that hooded sunshirt. Plus for me, sometimes I'm going straight to a grid pattern hooded fleece rather than the sunshirt. The grid creates pockets of air between fabrics, increasing the insulating properties. And for the boys, we'll often go to a hooded performance fabric sweatshirt. For our heads, as I mentioned in a YouTube short, we love neck gaiters in the fall because we can wear them in different ways in order to match them to changing conditions. For additional layers, we're sticking with carrying the top and bottom rain shells, but now we're adding in a down jacket. And that isn't necessarily a super light version of a down jacket. The base layer, mid layer, and if need be, the shell as a vapor barrier are all there to provide insulation that I need while I'm moving. The down is there for when I'm stopped or if we do have that unplanned overnight. So this is something that's in our pack a lot of the day and not something we're planning on putting on and never taking off. So we need to bring something that's big enough to protect us for that unplanned overnight. Similarly, for gloves, we're keeping the liner gloves, but now we're adding in an overglove or overmitt to help when conditions shift to anything more difficult. Of course, we're also still keeping our sun hats and sunglasses. The sun protection needs may actually be higher in the fall than in the summer if we are on snow and getting any of that reflection from underneath us. That's what our family is changing in our clothing layers then as we move from summer into fall hiking. And I hope you found this video useful. Hopefully you did if you got this far. So please hit that like button as it helps me get this content out to other members of our outdoor community. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe and ring that bell. And let us know if you have any particular clothing or gear items that you make sure to add to your pack when the weather turns colder and fall rolls in. We'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for joining us and keep on getting more out of that big outside.